You are listening to TBR Radio Presents, The Dixie Heritage Show, with your host, the director of Dixie Heritage, Dr. Ed DeVries. Once in a while you come across a clip, and I did so earlier this week, and it was Thomas Sowell testifying in 1987 at the Senate confirmation hearing for Judge Robert Bork. Of course, if you can remember that far back into our nation's history, a Judge Bork was Borked, and the name Bork, which should have been a noun, became a verb. Uh, but the Senate did not confirm Judge Bork, and instead they gave us Judge Kennedy. And uh, what a disaster that was. Anyways, this is Thomas Sowell, and he's basically schooling Joe Biden back in 1987. A couple questions. Uh... Uh, you think judicial activism, uh, doctor, has hurt blacks. Uh, judicial activism of uh, eliminating restrictive covenants in deeds, uh, um, eliminating segregation in schools, uh, one man, one vote, literacy test. Do you consider those judicially active? Well, as regards restrictive covenants, uh, I can see no evidence that they did anything other than make some people feel good because it was symbolic. Uh, as regards desegregation of the school system, that should have been done long before and on a much more sound basis. I've, I've gone into this at great length in, in previous writings. Um, but are the they... Problem with, no, no. You see, the problem is not whether you believe that school desegregation should have ended. I, I believe it should have ended long before. Okay. George Bork believes it should have ended long before. What he and what I have objected to are the principles used in that decision because those principles take on a life of their own and they come back to haunt you in other areas. Obviously this, this old phrase, the hard cases make bad law, uh, derived from that fact. You dream up a principle to reach this result and then the principle has a life of its own. So the principle of desegregating the No, schools. that wasn't the principle. The principle was the reason that they picked for it. Was well, that that's was, all I'm saying. Hmm. Okay, the reasons they picked yes. of desegregating the schools, you and Judge Bork agree were the wrong principles, and they should have not. So the, sh the court shouldn't have done that. The, no, no, the, the court should have done it. Oh, okay. Both of us have said the court should have done it. I see. And in my case, and I think in his case, the court should have done it a lot sooner. How? They should, have, they should have ruled that it wasn't equal protection of the law because nobody in his right mind believes that there was equal protection of the law in the Jim Crow era uh, of, the, of these okay. school systems. I'm just trying to figure out yes. what you're saying. Yes. Now, in the, in, when they desegregated the D.C. schools, mm -hmm. it's clear the 14th Amendment does not apply Everyone agrees that the 14th Amendment does not apply to the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. How would they have done it in the District of Columbia? Should they have just let it stand in the District of Columbia? Segregation? I, no, in fact, Senator, it's interesting that you say that because uh, I've gotten uh, the first thing I ever wrote in my, uh, to, on a public issue was in November 13, 1950, in the Washington Star, in which I argued for the desegregation of the D.C. school system. So that, uh, on what principle? I, I, I had not studied nearly as much then as I have 37 years later. Uh, and, and so I, I hadn't worked it out, nor, nor do I think that I would want to work it out on the run in, in front of a large group of, of lawyers uh, at this very moment in the time that's available. Well, I, how about literacy test? Was it judicial? I, oh, I, I, I see no, pro no reason why people shouldn't be literate in order to vote. The question is, if you have a black who comes in with his degree from Harvard and the uh, man behind the desk says, no, you're not literate, you can't vote, then this, this, you see, this is what bothers me. People are talking about how Judges should be sensitive to this particular group or yeah. that particular group. And if that means anything, if it means he's applying the law differently, that's precisely how blacks were held down for generations in the South. So by literacy applying the law differently. So literacy tests, as long as they were equally applied, yeah. are, are all right. Sure. So I thought you thought. Um, now, uh, I also want to clarify, you, I, I, I gather from your comments about MIT and Harvard, that you don't think there's enough blacks out there who are qualified to fill the number of vacancies allotted for them in those schools. Is that right? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, the word, word qualifies really is misleading. Well, the question you... is whether or not they, may, they are like the other students at Harvard and MIT. Well, okay. Well, so there's not... So, so they, they may be perfectly qualified. The same student might go to, through, God help us, I hope there's no idea here from Illinois, uh, uh, Illinois Institute of Technology and do well. Right. But, but there's no reason why he should fail at MIT. There's, there's no prestige in flunking out of the Ivy League. I got it. So, but my point is, you believe there are not enough black women and men out there that are the same as white women and men to be able to go through Harvard and MIT. Yeah. 
if there were, it would mean that the whole history of oppression had done no harm whatever. Well, so the answer is you don't think there are. I'm not, I just want to no, figure no, out what it's you're it's saying. Question, what I think is a factual matter. So factually, uh, the, you're oh, saying factually there are not enough. Factually, this study's already been done by Clickguard at Harvard, and he, the, the figures are all there. Anyone can look yeah. them up. Okay, no, I, 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 I just want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I, I want sure. to know what you're thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. um, have you read uh, all of Judge Bork's cases or no. any of them? Have I'm, you read all of his writings? I haven't read all of them, but I, I've been reading them for more than 20 years because I, was in, I used to teach antitrust economics. Uh, now, are you part of what they call the, the law and economics school? You know, that... <laughs> Would you consider know. yourself part I, of that school? I, I, I There's nothing know. wrong with that. It's not I, a bad school. I just want to know where you are. Uh, I, I, when I sit down to write, Senator, I, I don't ask what my label. I don't. I don't. I don't check my uh, identification tag to see what I, what I am. But well, I, I did. Um, uh, one of my books did win a prize as the best book in law and economics in 1980. Yeah, no, but I mean, there is a. a there's almost a term of art out there called the school of law and economics. Yes. And are, 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 are you part of that school intellectually? That's all I'm trying to get. I'm very much interested in the application of economic principles in the law and vice versa. Right. Now, my time's up. Thank you very much. web browser and type in www.barnesreview.org and discover the Barnes Review magazine. In the Barnes Review, you will read vignettes of man, from the prehistoric to the very recent, from forgotten races and civilizations to first-person accounts of World War II and the late Cold War. There is no more interesting magazine published today, nor a more significant and important subject than real history. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. You can subscribe to receive the Barnes Review magazine in its print form, or in convenient electronic delivery. Our host has been a subscriber to both formats for years. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. A number of years later, Dr. Sowell would be asked why he went to Congress and solicited the opportunity to testify on behalf of Judge Bork. And here is the footage from that interview, which we're getting courtesy of C-SPAN. The gross distortions that were coming out. Uh, I, would listen, I was listening to the he congressional hearings during the day, and I'd hear how Bork uh, was, uh, at the very least, racially insensitive or, or, or actually opposed to civil rights and so forth. And then I would go over to the Stanford L Law Library and, 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 t and, ch and check out Judge Bork's uh, record and his record before he became a judge. And I discovered uh, in, in those files uh, amicus curiae uh, uh, papers filed by Judge Bork repeatedly on the side of black civil rights organization. I learned that no civil rights advocate had ever lost a case in Judge Bork's court. Uh, and I was already familiar with, with uh, Bork's record uh, before he even, uh, before I even looked into the law, because I was teaching economics, and I often uh, read things that he wrote about antitrust law, which were which were brilliant things, and so an enorm enormously intelligent man, an enormously decent man, and all sorts of other filth was brought up. Uh, one being, for example, that he had, that he worked for big corporations, you see, because money was more important to him. And Bork was, a, was an academic, which is not a big, a big bucks uh, enterprise to get, get rich quick, uh, uh, and, and a government official, of which the same could be said. And for, at the particular time he went to work at a high salary in business, his wife was dying of cancer, and he wanted to have the money to make her last days as comfortable as he possibly could. And for that to be turned into, into, into some kind of cheap political charge, was just truly despicable. More than, more than that, the difference of one man on a Supreme Court that's divided is enormous. And every time I read a, an opinion by uh, Judge Anthony, Justice Anthony Kennedy that is wishy-washy and, and, and uh, incoherent in some cases, uh, I think that that's the price of defeating Judge Bork. And that 1987 Senate confirmation hearing for Judge Bork was not the last time that Thomas Sowell sparred with Joe Biden. In fact, here recently, just before the November 3rd election, if I dare call that farce an election, Thomas Sowell was on Mark Levin's Life, Liberty, and Levin program on Fox News. And he had this to say about the prospect of Joe Biden becoming president of the United States. The election goes to Biden. 
there's a good chance that the Democrats will then control all the two branches of Congress and the White House. And considering the kinds of things that they are proposing, uh, that could well be the point of no return for this country. I've got on the phone with me today Dr. William Von Peters. And Dr. Von Peters has has been uh, my doctor for the last, I guess, about 10 years now. And Dr. Von Peters, I was complaining about knee pain here a few weeks ago. And you gave me some stuff that you call knee formula. And I just have to say that the knee pain has subsided. My son was complaining of knee pain because being a baseball catcher, he, all the squatting, uh, his knee was making noises it shouldn't have made. I'll just put it that way. And so I started sharing it with him, and he has said that uh, he feels a lot better now. So tell us about the knee pain, and tell us why our pain is going away. Well, actually, the, the product is a, a homeopathic uh, formula that I developed originally because my wife had knee pain. And so she was complaining about it, and so I sat down, did the research, put the formula together, and so she was uh, kind of the guinea pig on the thing for that was for her. What it basically does, it's designed both to deal with uh, pain in the knees uh, as well as dealing with uh, swelling uh, of the uh, tissues around the knee, you know, where you get the water on the knee and that kind of thing. It's also very effective in, in taking uh, water from throughout the body as well as uh, such around the ankles. The caveat on it is that if a woman is breastfeeding, she should not take it because it will actually dry up her milk because it's that effective. It will pull the uh, uh, water out of, her, out of her breast so the milk dries up. Other than that, it's, uh, there is no caveats on it on on uh, or problems, counterindications, or anything like that. It's just a, a, a homeopathic electropotency designed to for the knees to, uh, as I said, to deal with both pain and the swelling. So I want to ask you one more question because I was always under the impression that having water around your joints had a cushioning effect and was a good thing, but yet I guess you could say the science or the thinking behind your product is doing the exact opposite. Well, you want some, obviously you need some uh, fluid in your knees and whatnot because there are, that's, it should be there. The problem, of course, is that uh, when they begin to swell, the tissues begin to swell around it and so forth, you're getting excess uh, uh, fluid that has to be uh, taken off. That's why the Many times, if uh, someone goes to the MD, they'll actually try and drain that fluid off the knee. Okay. And so tell us, how does someone who's listening to us today, how do they get their own? Ah, yes. The, the website is www.lifequestformulasplural.com. Uh, LifeQuestFormulas.com, and just look up knee formula, and uh, we'll get it shipped out to you. All right. Well, I definitely want to encourage all of our listeners to try the knee formula because I've tried it myself, and I can be a firsthand testimonial that it works. www.LifeQuestFormulas.com Just in case you're not mad yet, I've got a few more clips I'm going to share with you on today's TBR Radio Presents the Dixie Heritage Show. Here is a conversation between Anderson Cooper and Joe Biden, and it took place at some time over the summer. And basically, Joe Biden was promising us in no uncertain terms that if he were to become president, that gun owners beware. So to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right. If the fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. And Sleepy Joe's not just coming for gun owners. He's coming for gun manufacturers as well. Maybe you'll remember this clip courtesy of CBS from the 
early Democrat primary debate. 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. More than all the wars, including Vietnam, from that point on. Carnage on our street, and I want to tell you, if I'm elected and I'm coming for you, and gun manufacturers, I'm going to take you on, and I'm going to beat you. I'm the only one who's done So if you ever wondered what Ron Palillo would look like when he grew up, for those of you who are watching today's radio broadcast on YouTube, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe. Give us the thumbs up. That uh, really helps out our channel quite a bit. But for those of you who are watching this and not just listening to it, Maybe you've wondered what Ron Palillo would have looked like when he grew up. Did you see Bernie in that clip there? Ooh, 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 Mr. Cotta, Mr. Cotta. Ooh, 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 Mr. Cotta, Mr. Cotta. Anyways, Joe Biden was on a roll. He was not going to be interrupted. But we do have to be interrupted. We have to break for a commercial. And we're going to do so for one of our dear friends who I know is also a big-time supporter of the Second Amendment. And that is our good friend Clint Lacey over at Foothills Media. Phone with our good friend Clint Lacey. So your newest project is you've started a publishing company, Foothills Media. And uh, you'll be publishing uh, three tremendous books. Uh, The first of those is your book, The Beginner's Guide to False Flags. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about that book? If you were wondering how we ended up at this point in our history, And everything's going on. Beginner's Guide to False Flag takes you from the beginning of the country until uh, the election of Donald Trump, Charlottesville, the rise of the communists and the Russian collusion hoax, the rape of Delaware County, the story in which United States veteran uh, defended himself against a known uh, drug felon, only to find out that the local police were in on it. Crooked prosecutors. And one of those prosecutors was actually arrested coming back from uh, an island in the Caribbean uh, in a murder for hire plot. And it just details uh, just how corrupt one small county can be. And in the book, I said that Delaware County, Oklahoma, in the past was a safe haven for uh, outlaws from Missouri and Arkansas. And what the reader will find out, it still is. Blood in the Ozarks, expanded second edition, 156-year-old government cover-up cover in which out-of-control uh, union officer led his men to uh, murder men, women, and children at a Christmas gathering in the Missouri Ozark. I found it Foothills Media in uh, 2019 because I'm dedicated to bringing you the truth. Thank you, Clint. I know that our listeners are going to want to check out Foothills Media, so tell them how they can do so. Well, you can visit us at foothillsmedia.net, and that will take you to our website where you can uh, browse the books, read our blog posts, and uh, uh, catch up on news that you won't find anywhere else in the mainstream media. Foothillsmedia.net. Americans have suffered through pandemics and more disasters than I can name. But where there are calamities, there are always people doing nice things for their community in a completely selfless way. And those last few minutes of footage, compliments of Fox News Channel, were from Mike Rowe's Emmy Award winning show, Returning the Favor. Facebook has just canceled Mike Rowe's show. And talking about that cancellation on the Fox News Channel was Mike Rowe himself. It's a tricky word these days, cancellation. Um, the show was canceled. I wasn't. If I had been, I guess my my page would be shut down and I wouldn't be reading 20,000 comments from people who uh, who want to know who moved their cheese. But look, I, <laughs> I, this is a strange business. I feel bad for two and a half million fans of this show because returning the favor, it wasn't like the other shows I had worked on. This thing was programmed specifically by the people who who watched it. It was very, very personal. And they look at a show like that and 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 they look around and see times like this and it makes perfect sense for that show to keep going. By the way, a uh, Emmy Award winning show. Facebook would censor Mike Rowe is absolutely disgusting, of course. 
All censorship is disgusting, and we here at Dixie Heritage are against it. And that's why we've left Facebook. You say, well, Facebook hasn't censored or canceled Dixie Heritage. No, they've not. Not yet, anyways. But it doesn't matter. If they're going to censor others, we are going to be opposed to their censorship. We're not going to wait for them to censor us before we speak out. We're going to speak out now. And we're not just speaking out, but we're putting our money where our mouth is. And that's why Dixie Heritage has left Facebook and we've gone to MeWe. Maybe some of our listeners realized it last Friday for the first time. We did not post our weekly Dixie Heritage newsletter to Facebook. If you've not transitioned to MeWe, then you just missed out. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, you'll see down at the bottom of your screen, we have the link to our MeWe page on Dixie Heritage. Or you can just go to www.dixieheritage.net and click the MeWe tab. And it'll take you to our MeWe page. If you're not already a member at MeWe, you can sign up. MeWe works just like a Facebook. We got tired of just griping and complaining about Facebook and their censorship and their shadow banning. Uh, We decided we were actually going to go to a true free speech platform. You can be free from Facebook's tyranny as well. Join us on MeWe. Extra, extra, we all about it. If you're like me, and I'll bet you are, you like to be on the cutting edge of honest news and accurate information. 26 times a year, the American Free Press newspaper can be delivered to your door, packed with the kind of uncensored news that I know you're going to appreciate. If you're ever dissatisfied with your subscription to the American Free Press, their guarantee is that you just drop them an email and they will gladly refund the unused portion of your subscription. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.americanfreepress.net. Once again, www.americanfreepress.net. And find out about the American Free Press. Do it today. Extra, extra, we all about it. And we are running out of time for this week's TBR Radio Presents the Dixie Heritage Show. I would like to welcome our new advertiser, Dr. William G. Von Peters. And yes, Dr. Von Peters really is my personal doctor. He has been for about 10 years now. Uh, I saw him for a physical, and he and I just struck up a friendship, and he's been a blessing to me through these years. Let me say this. Dr. Von Peters is a true son of the South, and he is a strong supporter for Southern heritage. In fact, uh, he started a not-for-profit many years ago, that was called CSA Inc. And it is a not-for-profit that is designed uh, to advocate for and on behalf of Southern Heritage. And so uh, Dr. Von Peters actually reached out to us about advertising here on uh, the program because he wanted to support the work that we're doing here at Dixie Heritage. And so, uh, you know, if if you want to go to his website, lifequestformulas.com, Uh, You'll find some great stuff there. And like I said, as one of his patients, I can be a first-hand testimonial. And, uh, you know, you might want to call Dr. Von Peters. His phone number is at his uh, website as well. And you can talk to him, and uh, maybe he can help you with some things. I would also like to encourage you to go to our website, www.dixieheritage.net, www.dixieheritage.net. When you're there, you can sign up to receive a free copy of my weekly email newsletter, the Dixie Heritage Newsletter. And when you do, I will also send you a free copy of my book, The Truth About the Confederate Battle Flag. Both the newsletter and the book will come to you absolutely free of charge, no cost, and no obligation. But I want to put this information in your hands because we need to defend the Confederate soldiers' good name, our ancestors' good name. And speaking of our ancestors, what do you think that they thought about all of the stuff that we've been talking about on today's program? Well, I think what sums it up the best is a song that was sung by the group Southland. Of course, they're not the only ones to have sung this song through the years, but I think their version of it may just be one of the best. And that's, I'm a good old rebel, and for this Yankee nation, I do not give a damn. 
And so with that, I will leave you, but know that I'll be back again next week, same time, same place, with another great show for you. Until then, from all of us here at TBR Radio, God bless, and Lord willing, I will talk to you again next week. fair land of freedom I do not care a damn I'm glad I fought against it I only wish we'd won and I don't want no pardon for anything I've done It's the Constitution, this great republic too. I hate the Freedmen's Bureau in uniforms of blue. I hate the nasty ego with all its brags and fuss. Them lying, thieving Yankees, I hate them worse and worse I hate the Yankee Nation and everything they do I hate the declaration of independence too I hate the glorious union Tis dripping with our blood I hate the striped banner I fought it all I could Start at Point Lookout I caught the room of tears I'm a camping in the snow But I killed a chance of Yankees I'd love to kill some more Yankees lie stiff in southern dust We got 300,000 before they conquered us They died of southern fever, of southern steel and shot I wish we'd killed three million instead of what we got Constructed and I don't care a damn